Alright, so I'm going to run down the setup that we've got and this is kind of like run together as soon as we got all the materials in we just kind of started on it so um first off when you order the paint kit itself uh it comes with you get the paint and then you can add on like the hardener uh flattener agent stuff like that which you can go on the side and read about that i'm not going to explain it to you because I can't tell you much about it. Now, it comes with a little spray gun here, which some people talk crap about it. Some people, you know, it's actually not bad. Some people say that the valve spring goes out in it after a while. But we've actually, I don't know, we've done, I don't know how many different guns so far with this. This will be five. Uh, yes, we're going on five now with just the sprayer and haven't had problems. Um, you want to run uh, the reducer through it, um, not real often, but you want to run it through uh, at some point just to clean up the inside valve and everything, and that's this here, Duracoat Reducer. But you just, you know, you'll get an empty jar, you put a little bit in and just spray through, and then it's like as soon as you spray it through, it cleans it out. So. Another thing too is that this little ferrule right here. Um, you can see. I don't know if it's gonna focus on that tip right there. Yeah, there you go. See that needle sticking through. Well, when you open it up to spray, you spin this and it comes out. What you want to do is in between coats or in between spraying when you hang it up and you're doing whatever you got to do, and then go start again. Spin this back out to get that needle will poke through all the dried uh, paint because stuff dries really quick so do that in between coats and you'll keep it clean keep it spraying a real wide uh, wide group there because we didn't do it and it got real small and real thin and when we we're trying to do like the polymer parts it was just soaking so much of it in that we had a big big problem with it then we figured it out and everything's cool um, the kit comes with compressed air cans that you could use on it, but I haven't heard anyone say that you could recommend using it. Yeah, there's one there. Comes with this stuff, and they say you can do quite a bit with these, but you know, if you run out, you run out. And that would suck. So, uh, this is just a two gallon tank. Yeah. Uh, 100 bucks at Lowe's. Yeah. Uh, this is a hundred dollar tank. Um, this one, you see it's got a nailer on it, but you only need about uh, anywhere from 30 to 60 PSI. Yeah. Somewhere in that range would be perfect, really. We run it at about 45. Yeah, we, we've been doing it at 45, and that's been working for us. So, uh, depending on your line and your attachment, stuff like that, we got to quick detach to our line there. Because what we'll do is after we spray, we'll get a little air line. Uh, sprayer that we got somewhere laying around. Yeah, little. Well, yeah, that's it there. So after we put on the first coat, then we'll switch real quick and then uh, blast it with air, and they'll call that a flash coat. Just get it to dry on, sell in real quick, and then that way that your next couple of layers you can get on quick and uh, uh, get a better base coat done on it. So we built a little box. If you're going to do it, you need to do it indoors. We need to do it uh, in a low humidity, and we've actually got humidity gauge up here on the wall as well as a temperature gauge, so it gives the humidity. Uh, you want to keep it as low as possible. You run the air conditioner and get it down low, get the moisture out of the air. Um, but you want to make sure you're well ventilated. We've got a door open here with a fan, and then another air coming in here. Uh, and then we've got a box that we made, and I'll just kind of show you. It's just you got some cardboard and uh, some one by one by twos, but just a little box frame. Nothing fancy. Nothing fancy. Nothing fancy. Uh, you see, we got our own little hanger here, and this is kind of cool idea. Robin took some of these hangers, cut to the top here. Flip that over and then made little hooks with it so that way when you spray in, you 
it's been around without touching it. And then what we did, you can see on some of the other shotgun videos that we did, we can turn the box vertical and then we've got little uh, spots here where we can put rods vertically and then hang the shotgun parts and stuff in. So, uh, And then over here what we've got is we've just got a board with some dowel rods and then that way we can put all the parts and pieces of rifles and shotguns and stuff. And depending on what diameter is doing rifles and stuff, you know, We've got 22 we're doing, so you need something smaller than 0.22 inches. So I, I don't remember what that is. That's like a 316 through. I don't know what the hell it is. I forget. Little. I forget math. 316. Okay. Yeah, 316s. I went to school. Um, but uh, that kind of gives a rundown of of the parts and material. Um, even with it pretty well ventilated you're going to want uh, some type of either mask or respirator you can uh, get these uh, these I don't know what these are rated this is a 3M8247 or R95 filter these are good the little white paper ones they're alright but they're made for sanding they're made for larger particles and stuff like that just so you're not breathing in like sawdust and crap uh... this is actual one for uh... paint thinners chemicals and uh... different types of things like that and this works well the first paper one i used i had like well yeah kind of like that one there i had a headache from hell after spraying all night that works and then uh, Robin's got the full-fledged one there. He's got the Vader. <laughs> but uh, you definitely need something like that. Even if you're going to try to balls up and be tough. It, it's, <laughs> It'll break it down. Yeah, it's, it's not good. You don't want to be breathing that crap in. So uh, I don't think I'm forgetting anything else. Now, of course, we're doing like stencil templates and stuff, so... You know, having enough blue tape, and uh, we got a stencil kit there that you can, you can't really tell. You can see some of the shapes and outlines that are on it. But, and then our little Duracoat guide. But the stencil kit actually came from uh, BulldogArms.com. And uh, theirs are quite a bit cheaper. They don't come with a whole lot. They come with one little sheet of information that tells you uh, kind of what to do, but... Uh, the actual ones from Duracoat come with a DVD. <laughs> so. Anyway. Well, we managed with no DVD. Yeah, we've, we've, we've done pretty well without a DVD. We've, uh, we've got my Toro 609 done. I've showed in a video. We've got the shotgun done over here that will show up here pretty soon. We've got a single shot 22 barrel that's done in a kind of desert. I may have to take it over here. It's showing up blue. There we go. Uh, single shot 22 barrel. It looks pretty awesome, which used to be just an old school little 22, and now it's kind of beefed up the barrel. Got that. Right now, we've got uh, another Taurus. Uh, what is this? Oh, that's a Smith & Wesson 459. Oh, okay. Smith & Wesson 459. Oh, yeah, there it is. I was looking at one. All right, you can see like kind of how the finish is there, but then you go over here where we've shot the flat tactical black, and I'm in my own light, and it looks freaking brand new. So even if you're not into being all tactical and cool, you can still shoot uh, just flat black and turn old guns and make them look brand freaking new. I'll show that, and then uh, uh, there's Rock Island over here. It's done tan with some little sand and the LCP. Oh, there's the LCP. Yeah, yeah. Suck on that one time. <laughs> Suck on that. So, and that is a tactical OD green. I won't focus so there we go yeah look at that and the funny thing is is this stuff goes on smooth I'm running over I gotta shut this off real quick so there's the rock island to finish it Holla.